Hi y'all, we're Ellick and Cindy and we're sharing the journey. If you've been watching us for a while, you know that we live full time in a 32 foot Tiffin motorhome. We travel the country work camping, going from place to place, and that's how we enjoy seeing America. Today, we're talking about Camping World and our experience with dealing with Camping World. I'll go on for like 15 minutes telling you our story and blah, blah, blah. But Cindy has an easy way to tell you if you should buy a camper from Camping World or not. Cindy? No, don't. Just don't. That's all she likes to say. <laughs> so, I retired from the police department in 2015 up in Columbia, South Carolina. That's where we're from. That's where we lived the first 50 something years of our life. And uh, we decided that we were going to start experimenting with full-time RV life. Cindy's mother lived with us for eight and a half years and was in poor health. And we knew that we could not do anything until either she passed or moved in with one of Cindy's other siblings. But we knew that we would not be in our farmhouse forever. So we started looking for a camper. We went to John's RV which is not Camping World. We went to John's RV in Lexington, South Carolina and found a Sightseer 3010DS. Sunseeker. We found a Sunseeker 3010DS <laughs> and we decided that was the perfect floor plan for extended RV. We were gonna go out for a week a month and see if the full-time RV life was for us well here we are 2024 in our fifth year so spoiler alert it was we wanted to check around and see if we could find a better price and we went to several other campgrounds including camping world campgrounds we went to several different camper stores thank you cindy <laughs> and one of them was Camping World. And they did not have the Sightseer, right? Sunseeker. They did not have the Sunseeker <laughs> that we were looking for, but, which is a Forest Rivers product, but they did have the Forester, which is to Sunseeker what Ford is to Mercury. So the Forester, is the Mercury and the Sunseeker is the Ford, basically. It's just a higher trim level. Um, so we priced it out and they came in about $500 cheaper. And we decided to make the purchase based on several lies that were told to us by Camping World. First of all, it wasn't worth $500. Just pay the extra $500. And buy from a camper. Reputable. A reputable. Thank Good word. A reputable <laughs> seller of camping equipment. RV. Better known as RVs. Better known as RVs. <laughs> so, the first lie was that they had all these locations across the country. Hundreds of them. And if we're traveling around the country, we could just zip into any camping world we wanted to, and we could get the camper fixed, especially when it's under warranty. So, we buy it. First weekend, we are down in Savannah, Georgia. And we're out for just a quick four-day trip. My parents lived down in Savannah at that time. And so, uh, we went down there. We had issues with, I believe it was the refrigerator. So we popped into the camping world that was close to Savannah and said, hey, the refrigerator is not working. And they said, well, is it under warranty? I said, yes, it's under warranty. And they said, okay, we can fix it here, but we are now your home camping world. And any repairs from here on out have to be made in the Savannah store, which is ours from our home up in Columbia. 
Well, that didn't sit well with me at all. And we did not get it fixed. We just got a cooler with some ice and did the best we could. And uh, so I, when I got back, well, we spent, what, those four days, and we came up with at least two pages, legal size, the yellow pads, at least two pages worth of repairs that needed to be made. So we got back and I took it up to the Camping World, I believe it was Fernandina Road, Columbia, South Carolina, and went around to the service center and told them that we, we're gonna drop it off. We were gonna drop it off. And I said, how long do you think it'll be? And they said, oh, well, you just purchased this unit, so we'll move you to the front of the line, and you shouldn't be but just a couple of weeks. And I'm going, great. That was lie number two. Because we had already planned another trip. Yeah, we had already planned another trip. That fit in good. And then I purchased a uh, tire management system while I was there, and they said they would since it was uh, we had just bought the unit and they were doing all these repairs that while they were working on it they would put the tmps um, system on the coach for free that was lie number three so i went up there in a couple of weeks to pick up the uh, rv they had not even started work on it and i said well i told y'all that we had to well, we had another trip planned. We were going with some friends down to Florida, down to Jacksonville, I believe it was. And uh, they said, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Sharp. There was a lot of RVs in front of you and we have not started your unit and we've got your parts on order. I said, okay. So I talked with my friends and we waited. We would do another month. So I waited three more weeks I went down to pick up the RV after I'd made several calls and they had told me they were working on it. Some of the parts had come in. I got there to pick it up. I talked to the uh, service manager and nothing had been done to it. And I went to look in it. They had not put the tire management system on, which I handed them the box. They could have at least done that. And nothing. So we canceled our trip. This went on for several more months. I think we're in month four, maybe five, and we go down to Camping World. The, uh, the service manager had re quit returning my phone calls whenever I called. So we made the 40 minute drive over to the Camping World and got there and our salesman was I went into his office to see if maybe he could help and he's packing a cardboard box and I don't even remember his name but I said what's going on he said I've had it with all this stuff that's going on here he said I'm going to go work for another uh, camping uh, retailer another dealership I think it was up in Charlotte but I'm not sure and I said well ho oh, before you go can you please check on my camper he said mr. sharp they've been using your camper as a guinea pig I said what does that mean and I always say that they were stealing parts from my camper which they weren't Cindy tell them though how you say it so what happened was the parts that they ordered to fix our camper when those parts would come in, if they were try if they had sold another camper and were trying to get it delivered, so they could it, get paid, right? If it had an issue that required one of the parts that they had ordered for our camper, they would use the part that had just come in for our camper to fix this camper that had just been bought so that they could get it delivered and off the lot and then they would reorder us another part. So it was just a vicious cycle. So we ended up threatening to get a lawyer. Um, we, we did not have to get a lawyer, but what we did tell them is that 
we were gonna come back every day and check on the camper and pretty much we did we hounded them for probably two weeks wouldn't you think if not more I mean it took them a while to get it and they finally fixed our camper and then we, we then when we did go to pick it up we went through the checklist with them and we tried every single thing before we left the lot because we knew that if we left the lot and it was not done, it was going to be a fiasco trying to get it fixed again. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, there were a couple of things they did not fix completely or properly. And they fixed it right there while we were there. And we waited and told them, no, we're not leaving. You're going to fix it now. And then I didn't even mention the sales process as you're going through the paperwork. Yes, it was $500 cheaper, but they, they tried, tried to sell, to sell you, you everything. everything. Tire protection, paint protection, um, Good Sam's lifetime membership, extended warranties. And it was just a battle getting through the whole process of just buying the camper now we bought go ahead and don't get me wrong every single camper you buy you're gonna have a punch list of stuff that needs to be fixed so that part's not on camping world any camper we've ever bought from any dealer there's always a punch list it's just like when you have a house built from the ground up there's always a punch list it was the way they handled the punch list that was right. the issue and i've heard the same horror story over and over and i've even been told by people that have worked for camping world camping world doesn't care about ever selling you another camper there's so many new people getting into the camping that they just want that first time naive camper to buy their camper from Camping World and they try to make as much money off that person as possible. Or the weekend camper. Yeah, or the weekend who, warrior. Who's not camping in their camper very often. Right. I mean, how many campers have we seen in people's backyards? They use them once or twice a year and they pay right. $70,000, $80,000 for these campers. Now, I'm, I'm not speaking from not having experience. We've bought two more motorhomes since we dealt with Camping World. I think it was in 2016. It was either 2015 or 2016 when we bought our Forester. Our next two campers we bought up in Greer, South Carolina at Adventure Motorhomes. And let me tell you, night and day, they didn't try to sell you all that stuff. They've actually got, I believe, nine camping spots in a big parking lot, full hookups, behind their dealership. They'll let you park there and try out all the systems. Um, in our last motorhome, when we're in now, the Tiffin, that's where we bought it. And we were coming through town to see our kids and we were having just a minor issue. I wanna say it was a hot water heater. I don't remember exactly, but they said, yeah, just pull in. And I said, well, you know we're gonna be coming through late they gave me the gate code as a prior customer because I'd already bought another motorhome before the Tiffin from them they gave me the gate to the dealership code we went in we parked for the night went inside told them what the issue was they came out and told us okay the bay will be ready in a half hour so we closed up the camper drove around got the camper fixed they let us stay that night because it was 4 30 in the afternoon or 5 before it was fixed they let us stay that night and um, in their spot for free and then we left out the next morning to continue our adventure and so that's the kind of camping RV dealership you want to deal with so that's our horror story with camping world and Maybe you've had a good experience or maybe you've had a bad experience. Leave comments down below. And it could just be the camping world we dealt with in Columbia, South Carolina. There could be good ones out there. Cindy doesn't know. <laughs> I'm skeptical. She's skeptical because our 
Well, dealings. and I've heard it from so many other people too. Yes. That, that but our is, dealings were terrible. Yes. We will. Uh, I will never buy another camper from Camping World. Now we have gone to several Camping Worlds just to go in and look at the floor plans or, and that kind of stuff. Or to purchase some of their camping equipment. Or well, something. an example, our heater went out in the middle of the winter in I Minnesota. I had to get a uh, circuit board or the computer brains to the um, Dometic heater that we have on board. Right. There was the closest dealership was a Camping World. They had one. The price was outrageous. I could have gotten it for forty or fifty dollars cheaper on Amazon, but I bought it from Camping World. They because they had it, and I could install it. it and I needed it right then. So, you know, I'm not saying that there's no purpose for Camping World, but if you're buying an RV, I would seriously look for other avenues to make that purchase, unless you're just at a good Camping World. Right. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, look in the About section or the More section. There are links to our affiliates and, and other ways to support the channel. But thank you for watching, happy camping, and we'll see you on the next one.